let's take a ride to Agrigento in the Valley of Temples. The ancient city of Cregas, as it was known at the Greek times, was conquered by many people. We get a brief history, so stay tuned. Put it at the top of your bucket list. That's all I want to say. Enjoy. Here's our very special Agrigento guide, Sergio. Why was Agrigento so important? So Agrigento is one of the most important towns in Sicily for the history. Uh, and the main thing are the Valley of the Temples that you know is amazing, unbelievable. We are witness of the most uh, beautiful, the best preserved Greek temple you can see all over the world, the Temple of Concordia. The best preserved the Greek temple you can see everywhere, perfect classic mature style, was made by the Greek Sicilians here, a temple that is so beautiful that it can represent the beauty itself, following the rules of beauty made by the ancient Greeks. Uh, the perfect golden proportion. Everything is unbelievable. If you have to come here just to discover the secret of beauty. So, uh, there's a difference between uh, the Greek temples uh, and the Greek Sicilian temples uh, because of the stone was used by Sicilians, uh, especially uh, in Sicily, in uh, Agrigento and in Salinonte. Sandstone it is very fragile, so they have to adapt to do this different kind of uh, of temples. At the end, the structure of the temple changes a lot. The sedimentation of the temple of the sandstone is very important. You see there the sedimentation that is inclined like this, uh, cut in the quarries just to give more strength to everything. And even the inner structure of the temple was made with a different uh, system and style, typical of the island. After the Greeks, there were also the Carthaginians vying for this place and then the Romans. This has very rich history. Yeah, no, we have 12 different dominations. Uh, so we started with the Greeks. Uh, the Greeks, uh, they were uh, invaders. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to know that when they came here, the Greeks were only young men, no women at all. Uh, here, before they were the Sicans, uh, so they kidnapped uh, our girls uh, and made the new Greek families. <laughs> and then after the Greeks, uh, we have to receive the Romans uh, and the Carthaginians uh, sharing the, uh, the, the, the town for a very long time. Until what did the Carthaginians do to this place? They destroyed, they destroyed it. it. Yes, when they came to the old Battle of Emera, they destroyed everything. Eleven huge monumental temples. Only three thousand people escaped, went to Syracuse, host of Syracuse. The rest of the people here, they died or they became slaves of the Carthaginians. Hmm. And then when the Byzantines came here? So they came, the they came after the Roman Empire. Hmm. But the Byzantines were Romans of the Eastern world. They came here just to recover the old empire. Uh, the only problem with the Byzantines that they were uh, very uh, imposed a lot of taxes uh, to us, to the Sicilians. Uh, so when the Arabs came here in 823, we knew that uh, the Sicilians were very happy. <laughs> they didn't have to pay taxes. <laughs> and they were free to have their own religion until the Normans came. The Romans, they came here in, uh, in the town of Agrigento in uh, 1080. Mm? So late? Like, yeah, yes. Um, 250 years of history. Well, they came to us in Catania first. Yes. Uh, uh, Sicily was conquered uh, uh, not in the same moment, about 30 years for conquering all the island. And then after the Normans, uh, we have uh, the period of uh, the Swabians, uh, uh, French again with the Angevins. Uh, the only one rebe we rebelled because they uh, dared to touch our girls. <gasps> and then there was the big rebellion. Yeah, yeah, we were in 1282. No? Uh, now we set free from them uh, thanks to a rich, um, uh, an agreement between uh, the French and the Spanish. So we become Spanish. <laughs> a long period uh, we... Um, so Agrigento follows exactly what the rest of Sicily yes, does. Yes, yes. Yeah, you see today is uh, sunny in this moment, rainy in a moment, but you know this is a very dry place normally. Fantastic for uh, sightseeing, walking in the countryside. I call Frankie, oh, it's very Frankie. Ooh. Frank Capra is the name. Frank Capra. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the name of this goat is Capra Girgentana. Only goat. here in Agrigento. From the ancient name of Girgenti, the town you see up there, top of the hill. 
Cornuto va bene qua. Non me, il nome è latino perché non si mangia. Ma la terra non si mangia. Non si mangia? No, questa non si mangia per noi. Per noi, per noi so, so. Le bacche che sono belle. This is the remains of one of the walls of fortifications here. It's actually all over Agrigento here. And look at this the beautiful view of the sea. Here's some exciting news for the people of Agrigento. The Italian government has named Agrigento the Italian Cultural City of Italy in 2025. And of course, one of the big highlights will be the Valley of Temples. Now, the Valley of Temples, it's called, right? But it's not on a valley. That was just a name, a bunch of French tourists that came here many decades ago. They saw this, they saw a number of temples and they decided to call it Valley the Temple, a little tidbit for you. It was up there, then they opened a big door there, so I'm going to the catacombs. And here is Temple of, dedicated to Hercules, the strongest Greek god of them all. This is what it looks like right now. Intelligence, uh, and then, intelligence. It is what uh, should be at the end of a complete reconstruction. And when was this one built? Built by an Englishman, Sir Alexander Hutcastle, spending 80,000 Italian lire of that time. That, uh, just to have an idea, buying the garden with the villa, the cost was 40,000 Italian lire. Here, 80,000. And how and much, about, how about how many euros? Uh, a couple of million euros, more or less. And when was this built? What year? In 1921. 1921, 1925, more or less. You guys know what this is? These are almond trees. This, by the way, is the largest archaeological park in the world, and it's full of all types of trees, but the most important ones are the almond trees. Ciao! It's more than just Greek ruins, it's also beautiful trees, plantations, and views of the sea. And these beautiful kids, there's a lot of kids here today, some field trips going on. It's pretty easy to walk this two to three kilometers, it's about a mile or so from one end of the park to the other, of course plenty to see. And here we are approaching Concordia. It's like you're in Greece here. Oh wait, this once was part of Greater Greece. These structures right here are where they buried the dead. And this was a family burial site right here. And now, this is very interesting. Why are they shaped like an arch? The symbol is right at the beginning of the arch is the birth. Then at the top, is the reunification with God, and at the end is death. I wish you guys could smell these rosemaries. This is inside of one of the gardens here. You can smell rosemary, lavender, and even aloe vera down there. Paradise within paradise. Alfred, I'm always astounded when I go there. It is just so breathtaking, and to think that people were walking on those grounds over 2,500 years ago. It's just mind-boggling how much history was in that area. And it really is a paradise within paradise with all the beautiful trees and, and all the structures. So it's just a great place. And the, one more thing that I want to point out about temples. When you think about the Greeks, Alfred, you think about the number of temples that they put here in Sicily. They really loved Sicily and invested in Sicily. And every time they put a temple down, they put their mark. They said, we're here, we're here to stay in Sicily. Well, you know what I think about it? I mean, besides the good, I also think about the bad. It's almost like Taumina, abject beauty, but yeah. if the streets can talk, because a lot of the citizenry of that area got taken into slavery, not once, but a couple of times even. Yeah. You know, we're an island. Which basically. is really a summary of the island's history, right? right? Time and time again. What's Sicily's record is a conqueror? I think it's zero or fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Listen. I don't need to have any commentary on that. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> oh my goodness. So uh, we 
strongly, strongly suggest that you put Agrigento, whether you're staying on the West Coast or East Coast, it really is worth the trip to visit those valleys. But in that area, too, there's many other towns. There's the Porto Empodecla, which we did a whole video on. Uh, the Scala de Turkey is beautiful. Um, Palma Monte Chiara is over there. A bunch of little towns. It's a different, everything looks very different in that province of Agrigento, but well worth seeing. You know, if you go to, uh, say, one of the booking companies who look for a hotel over there, mm -hmm. there's that place called Call a Verde Park Hotel, it's called. Yeah. Call a Verde Park Hotel. That I would suggest you stay for a couple of days to do the Spanish, uh, I mean, the Turkish steps in this whole area. And Agrigento. You can actually, for dinner, sit outside and look at the Valley of Temples. They have such a garden over here, a beautiful garden. Mm -hmm. You get yourself right a, nice, a nice drink, like a, a spritzer or something like that, and you sit in their garden at the Calavita Bak Park Hotel, Esther, and it's great. And if when you go by the trees, you can pick out some of the Nespoli and eat them. You Which see is these? the period, right? Uh, right now it's Espoli, uh, Nespolo Nespoli. time uh, uh, in, here, in uh, Sicily, and man, that's a good place to just munch on those guys and have a drink and think about... History. The other place I would suggest is in Leone. It's a hotel where the two brothers collect artifacts that were taken from Sicily and put it into a museum. Because believe it or not, what happened here for many years is that the travelers, especially in the 50s and 60s when people started discovering Sicily, especially in Northern Europe, you could just take some remains, some Greek remains, Roman remains, vases, and all types of things and take it home. And these brothers have made it their mission to go all over Europe and the world and buy back these pieces. And of course, we did an entire video on them. So that hotel is in Lyon, and I can't remember the name, but I'll leave you a uh, description in the description I'll leave you a link to their hotel we're gonna be back in Agrigento in a couple of weeks so I'm gonna have much more but that was just a little bit of a snippet for you next a nice snippet bunny good Thank job you. I liked it next listen to this story so um, in Catania with uh, the Marcuso family Len and his beautiful family we just did a private tour with them and um, we're in Salvatore's store in Catania where we take people to buy some uh, things and this woman comes up to me and says, Esther, oh my God, you're Esther with you, me, and Sicily. We're in this store. They were in the same store. We're in the store because you told us to come into this store. Anyway, so we met up with Diane Salvatore, her husband, and um, her sister and husband. We had spoken about meeting up, but the coincidence that we would meet in the shop that I told them to go visit was something else. And then Len and those guys, the family, we all went to have a little bit of a coffee. And so take a look. Okay, Alfred, look what you got. You got peeps and peanut butter. And these are my jelly beans, not your jelly beans. <laughs> And Salvatore is one of our fans here. Your show is wonderful. We've been watching your show for years now, my wife and I. And uh, I'm just so thankful that we were able actually to meet you guys here in Catania. I was born here in Catania. How does it feel to come back here now? Oh, this is always my home. Even though I lived uh, in the States for 35 years, when, I, when I'm coming back here, this is my, my home. And uh, yes. Yeah. Nice. Oh, awesome. Diane, want to say something? And look, there's uh, Len and his beautiful family that just arrived yesterday, and we met Diana. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. So you've been watching our show for several years. Yes, we love it. Uh, my husband is Sicilian, and uh, it it has awoken uh, the desire to come back to Sicilia, uh, experience everything all again. We love it. And then your sister is here as well, and her husband. Jim and Carrie Sue. And what do you guys think? Oh, we love, love your it. show. Oh. Yes. I'm of Sicilian heritage, so it's good to come back here and, and go to all the places that you pointed out in your show. So it's just a blessing that we're meeting you here now. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure. And we're going to hear much more from this family once they've seen a little bit of Sicily. What's remarkable to me, blows my mind, is that somebody who watched a previous video heard me scrounging around for maple syrup 
and peanut butter and brought and it peeps. to Sicily and peeps. and peeps and brought it to Sicily with them and put it in their hotel room on the off, off chance, chance that, that they get a bump <laughs> into us and they bumped into us and that woman I'll tell you what thank you very very much for those I had no maple syrup here. No, you Most, got peanut butter. And peanut butter. Len brought the, the, the maple syrup. The peanut butter and the Len maple brought Okay, the maple you know, I understand syrup. it, but, you know, people bring stuff like that. Not that I scrounge, but, you know, I scrounge. Basically, it's the long and the short of it. E. Thank you very much. And this is how we start our morning. Not bad, huh? What do you think? Delissimo. <laughs> this is life, huh? Yes, it is. So tell I mean, me uh, your experience so far in Sicily. It's been great. Esther has been great with us, and uh, we've seen so many places that I'm just thankful to be here today. What's your biggest takeaway about Sicily? It's a beautiful place, and it must have been, uh, I don't even know how people could leave from here years ago, but the beauty is it, it's just incredible. And here we are. Ching, ching, everyone. Ching, ching. made it, Petulia Soprana, uh, home of our ancestors. My grandparents emigrated from here. Um, my father was able to step foot here. My brother, myself, and now my family. It's uh, an overwhelming experience. Um, and I, I thank Esther for helping us put it together. And uh, it's really just a beautiful place. It really is. Beautiful thing is that Len and his family, we did a little bit of a touring and then he got to see his ancestral hometown. And I could just see, I didn't go with them to Palermo, but I could just see in his face that he was touched. So what a wonderful family and we're so happy that they came with us. Great people. Retired New York City detective. We have got one of one of the, the kids is going to RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology. Lin, we've got Lindsay, Peter, uh, Thomas. Great and family, Stacey. great family. They had a dinner with us. It was just great. You know, the kickoff of uh, Americans coming here is just about ready. Uh, did you know that Google this week announced that Sicily is at the top of their countries in the world that you should visit well they're already coming in but I want to call to your attention four people this week that Esther and I had the opportunity to work with uh, and talk to and basically socialize with first one is Rick Morales from Houston Texan who bought a house in Talmina just finishing up his citizenship work and they all, Rick has something completely in common with these other folks that he doesn't know. Rick Morales, great guy, Houston, Texas. The next one is our pal Jody DeLuca, San Francisco, California, who by now is a citizen and has relocated here. Uh, and now she's down by the uh, Avales, Setacusa area. But we, we had a wonderful time with her uh, at dinner with Jim Ingram from Orlando, Florida who has a place now in uh, Molta Santa Stasia. And then, today, we met with Jack Allensworth and Wendy Allensworth from St. Louis, Missouri. Frisco, St. Louis, and oh, how can I forget? The Len family from Long Island, New York. They all have one thing in common. When you look at them and you talk about Sicily, you could see in their eyes that they're mesmerized by this place. Because Sicily really is a jealous mistress. And watching videos is great, but I really think that if it's in your heart 
and if it's in your soul, I think that you should spend an ex extended amount of time here if you could. Remember, as a citizen with the United States visa, you're entitled to come here for three months. Find a place, come here, experience Sicily, and guess what? It'll never leave you. So I wanted to tell you about these people, and next week, we have other people coming, just like these folks. It's so fun to hear that people have been watching and enjoying our videos. And if you have, please hit the like and share it with a friend. And one way to support us is by joining our community. There's a button that says join down below for $1.99. You just actually just help support this channel by helping us get new equipment and so forth. Hey, listen, I have a big hot flash for you here. No, wait a minute. I didn't say hot flash, did I? I have a big flash here for you. Sometimes at the end of next week, our new uh, revamped website will be coming up. Am I correct in saying Hopefully. that? Hopefully. WWW, me and Cicely, we do we have, have it up, up there, there right, right now, now, but our new one is coming. And, and that's going to include all of our, our Tuscany tour, our June tour, and some of our tours that are coming up next year pretty darn soon. So it's very exciting. I want to, th and just so you know, this website. And this is what I'm happy about the most. E. This website and our SicilianProject.com website was created by Sicilian company. So Flazio. It's Flazio.com, who did a great job. And yes. we're thrilled that we were able to take some of our donations and money and give it to Sicilians to keep the the economy over here, a little drop here, a little drop here, Esther is it makes me very, very happy, happy and to do that, that we are supporting the Sicilian economy. And in fact, for you, all of you guys who are coming, I told Len, he bought a little here, a little bit there, you know, the kids brought some stuff here and there, and I was like, Len, thank you for supporting the Sicilian economy. On another note, the other day we had, I'm sure you guys have heard about this, a four point four or four point seven magnitude earthquake here in Catania. And Alfred and I were having a little bit of coffee. We were shooting his quintessential Alfred. And I was like, Al, the water is moving. He's like, relax. I'm like, I feel there was something in the there was something shaking. It lasted about three seconds. It turns out it was uh 4.4, 4.7 magnitude earthquake, and a lot of people in Catania felt it, but it was actually outside of Ach Castello where it happened. So there were no injuries, uh, thank God, no destruction. So thank God for that. But you know, we've had earthquakes before that have destroyed 1693, for instance, and some other smaller ones in uh, 2018 or 2019. No, 2018, there was one in uh, Zafarana Etnea that, you know, destroyed parts of the street. So it's something um, something to keep an eye on. Listen, you want to know why it's saying the tough <laughs> earthquakes? Yeah. Volcanoes. Oh, yeah. Flash fires, flash fires. Floods, and conquerors, as you can, as you can see, and I get conquerors. <laughs> conquerors. <laughs> so guess what? Survivors. Basically, we say no problemo. What else Niente. do you have? When's dinner? Niente. When's dinner? Is it tonight? <laughs> Five o'clock. I hope we're having pasta. <laughs> That was funny, honey. Thank you very much. It was uh, just a little, little humor a little, to lighten our day up here. A little here. bit of humor. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure you subscribe. And we'll see you on another video. You know we're here on every Sunday, 4 p.m. Sicily time, right here on our channel. Arrivederci. Sabana Diga, grazie per tutti. Ciao. Ciao.